What did you think about this love of Jesus talk? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was just over your head? It was over my head for quite a while. But you know, uh, one of the big blessings in my life was uh, the Watsons, uh, d their natural daughter, uh, my sister Faye. And uh, if ever there was a, a sweeter woman on earth who would know uh, about Jesus, it was Faye. And uh, Faye was able to bring across to me that uh, the things that had happened uh, in my life were in the past. And that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the devil really does like to disrupt somebody's life and, and build himself uh, a tool for destruction down the road. And uh, Faye always talked to me about, you know, how much I was loved and that uh, Jesus had a plan for my life. And Mr. Watson built into me uh, very strongly about the idea of building myself, uh, surrounding myself with eagles in my life, people who were stars, people who were out for good, not for uh, disruptive evil things. He used to tell me that if I wanted to soar with the eagles, I had to hang out with the eagles, and if I wanted to hang out with the turkeys, then I was gonna be a turkey. Yeah, he said you'd become the average of those you hung out with, yeah, which I thought average, was pretty wise. Yeah, the average of the, basically the average of the top five people that you hang out with. Is what he would say. Sort of a sort of a spin on that old adage: "A man is known by the company he keeps." Exactly. Yeah. He also taught you that um, your choices plus your actions equals your life. Yeah, that's the rule that I live with. Yeah, that's yeah. the mantra. Yeah, and I still live with that today, uh, Jim. You know, and you can you can look at your day as you wake up, and your choices begin from the moment you open your big eyes. Yeah. And uh, do I get up happy? Do I get up? Do I get up happy? Right. Uh, do I serve my wife? Do I serve my children? Do I serve my community? Do I uh, serve uh, Jesus today uh, in the way I live my life? Do I make uh, proper choices? If you think about that mantra, my choice plus my actions equals my life, every day we go through 100, 200, 300 decisions where our choice and our actions equals what our lives will be. Yeah. And, uh, and so I live that every day. I speak, you speak about your wife. You, tell me about your first wife. Mm -hmm. It's quite a story. Yeah. I met Darlene. Uh, she was this dream girl, and uh, I met her. She was engaged to be married. Uh, she walked into a gym one night, and I, I turned and saw this beautiful young woman come into, my, into the, light, uh, the gym, and, and she came into my life, and I thought, that's the girl for me. You know, it was like God was saying, this is the one. And, small uh, complication, she was already engaged. She was already engaged, small complication. I thought, well, I might be able to woo her, you know. <laughs> so it took a year to do that, and uh, I gave up. I, she was a hairdresser, and by the end, uh, the last few months, I was getting my hair cut every 10 days. I was almost <laughs> bald. I looked like I was in the armed forces. And, uh, but I couldn't get her, so uh, we became friends, but there is no indication on her part of anything else. So I gave up. I was in this small northern town working, and I thought I, I so I, I got rid of my apartment. I sold all my furniture. I quit my job. I bought a bus ticket to go back to my hometown. Uh, that night, uh, my staff uh, asked to have a party for me, a little going away celebration. The bus left around 1, 1 in the morning. She, uh, she happened to be there, and, and uh, I thought, oh, Lord you know, just tempt me with this unattainable woman one more time. And as everybody was hugging me goodbye and I was getting ready to go over to the bus depot, she came up and I said, could I talk to you? And, and sure enough, the ring was off of her finger. And she said, uh, I just wanted you to let you know that you don't have to be afraid to talk to me anymore. And, uh, and being the macho young guy I was, I said, well, I was never really afraid to talk to you anyhow. <laughs> and uh, wouldn't you know it, she gave me a hug that night as she w wanted to hang out that night. And I said, well, actually, I have to, I'm heading home to see my family. And so she gave me a hug at the bus depot, and she said, when will you be back? And I said, uh, Sunday. <laughs> so I came back to no job, no apartment, nothing. But, but I came back, and, and so that was a great chase. So she didn't know that you were leaving. Yeah. Uh, and and so you came. Uh, where did where did you stay Sunday night? I mean, yeah, I got home Sunday night and I stayed on a friend's couch. <laughs> 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 but I did get my job back the next day. Oh, well, there you go. So, so and, and and it turns out that uh, you married. You were just in your early twenties, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you had two sons. Yeah. And then she was diagnosed with cancer. 
diagnosed with cancer on December 19th, we found out. Yeah. You died when she was 28 years of age? 28, yeah. Yeah, six months later. It was a tough, uh, for a guy who always wanted to have a home, yeah. you know, and I had really put so much into building a family with Darlene, uh, it was a devastating loss. Huh. So. And so for a period of time, you were um, uh, a single parent, um, got quite depressed at one point, yeah. actually thought about ending it all. Yeah. But then uh, one of your boys said something to you that really changed everything. Tell us about yeah. that. We've got about three minutes left. Yeah, you know, God puts uh, people into your lives, and he's always placed someone in my life at the right time. And, Little Bradley was five years old at the time, and, and uh, we were watching uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Mm -hmm. Kelly, our, my youngest, was down for his nap. I had planned to commit suicide two days later, had it all planned out. Uh, we watched All Dogs Go to Heaven on, uh, on, in the afternoon, and, and at the end, of course, Charlie dies, the dog dies and goes to heaven, and Bradley was sitting beside me, and he looked up with big tears coming out of his eyes, and he had just lost his mother you know, months before, and he said, uh, you know, Daddy, please don't die and go to heaven. And uh, I just, all of a sudden this peace came over me, this uh, realization of the craziness that was going on in my mind. And, and uh, so I told him that I wouldn't die and go to heaven, and, and uh, he had no clue of what was going on in my life at that time. And we laid there on the couch together and fell asleep and woke up in a different mood. And then I went on a, uh, you know, a big r McDonald's road trip with the boys for yeah, 47 week, days. 47 days of I couldn't believe it. You ate <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's for 47 days. 47 days. Did you gain any weight? Yeah, I gained a couple <laughs> hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but you really saw this as a turnaround because you bonded with those boys. You, you felt that you'd been d too distant from them. Well, we'd been apart for six months yeah. when Darlene was ill, yeah. and it, completely apart, yeah. and I'd lost touch with the boys. Yeah. And then I'm trying to be a, a mom and a dad at the same time, yeah. and roles were mixed. And You know, it's, it's a remarkable story, Tom, and uh, you know, you've got to get your own copy of the book, Friends, and we'll tell you how to get it in a moment. Uh, to read the full the full uh, story, you know, as I read the reviews, you know they're they're all so warm and glowing, and I can understand why. Uh, the Lord eventually brought another woman into your life, whose name is Kathy with a K. Kathy with a K. Kathy with a K. My my Kathy always makes sure it's Kathy with a K. Yeah. And uh, you have another child, Jordan, our son. Jordan. Jordan. So you got three boys now. How old are the the, the, the boys now? 24, Brad will be 25 in, in next month, and Kelly's 22, and uh, Jordan's 17, and Kathy and I, this, today, February 15th, I heard you talking about Valentine's. This is the day I asked her to marry me 19 years ago. So. Wow. Wow. That's an amazing story. Um, just, just quickly, friends, the book uh, is subtitled The Journey to Becoming a Better Man, Husband, and Father, and uh, this just, it's, it's Tom's story with a lot of uh, wisdom, not only on the lines, but between the lines. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real page turner, uh, just an honest uh, account of uh, a guy's journey. And something I've never seen, and I read a lot of books, Tom, you get, have pages and pages of what you call acknowledgments. Mm. And you categorize the various people who have uh, um, contributed to your life. Eagle educators, eagle friends, eagle community families, eagle Watson family supporters, <laughs> eagles of a professional sort. Uh, these are the eagles that... Uh, Pop Watson said you should associate with. If you want this book, friends, here's you can get it. We, we have it at the e-store, crosswoods.ca or 1-800-265-3100. The first 28 copies are signed by Tom. Uh, it's, a, it's a real encouraging book, and I know you're going to enjoy it. And thanks for coming our way, Tom. Thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. We'll be back with more right after this.